heartbreaking image of the Queen sitting alone at the funeral of the Duke of Edinburgh was a striking reminder of the harsh reality of the pandemic. Yeah, it's affected us all. That Just that one scene, just seeing that, so many of us talking about it since Saturday. Similar scenes have been witnessed at funerals across the country. And one person who's experienced this is Craig Bicknell, who was prevented from comforting his heartbroken mum at his father's funeral last year. You may have seen this footage before, where him and his brother go to sit next to his mm. very upset mum and then the staff at the time, who, I guess, were just doing their jobs... Uh, sort of stop them from doing so. Craig joins us now, along with Pastor Lorraine Jones and Professor Adam Finn, a member of the Joint Committee mm. on Vaccination and Immunisation. Um, Craig, I'm guessing there doesn't a day go by that you don't think of that day and think of your father, but I imagine on Saturday you it was a very poignant moment when you saw the Queen uh, there sat on her own. Yeah, it was a harsh reminder, really. Um... What everybody's going through, you know, no matter who you are, you know, whether you be the queen, whether you be, you know, me and my family, another family, everybody's got the same rules to adhere to. Yeah. And so going back to that moment, do you understand why the staff at that time, I mean, you know, OK, it was a different time of the pandemic when things were a lot worse than they are now, but did you have any understanding of, I think, well, OK, they're just doing their jobs and I get it, or were you, were you quite upset by it at the time? Um, I was really upset by it at the time, obviously, and things were different back then. Um, so, but what I'm confused with, that was back then. A lot's changed since then. We've come on a long way, I believe, with, obviously, now we've got the COVID tests. Um, <clears throat> we've got the vaccine in place and stuff like that, but we're still at the same rules. Um, and I just don't get now why we can't change the rules of the funerals for other families out there. And, you know, and make it easier for everybody so people can go and say goodbye and stuff like that. It just is confusing for me. I say back then, I totally understand. I know I broke the rules, but now I, I don't understand, to be honest with you. It, I it, think so much changed. It, those images, both of the funeral um, of your father and also um, seeing the Queen, they just bring home the, the cruelty, the brutality of some of these restrictions. I mean, Pastor Lorraine Jones, you have... Um, officiated at a number of funerals over the course of the pandemic. It's our, our moment of greatest vulnerability, isn't it, when we most need that closeness, that connection. Now, we understand why um, transmission is a risk, but have you been in situations like Craig has where somebody's had to say, I'm sorry, you can't, you can't touch each other, you can't put a hand on someone's arm? You see, the guidelines are very strict, and as ministers, we have to adhere to it. And um, I've seen, I've seen images like that. Not even images. I've officiated funerals where you know they're, they're burying their mother, and the daughters cannot receive a hug or a comforting touch or word during that moment of deep anguish. And you know, the, the ripple effects of this is what I'm most concerned of because. It does have a ripple effect from before birth to birth. We are used to human contact. And to now have that taken away totally, especially through the hours of grief, it does have an effect. I had to bury my sister, Denise Jones, on Friday, and she's got four girls. And the social distancing had to be adhered to, but we're talking about young teenagers young people that also have to go through that grief by themselves. Oh, I'm so sorry for your loss. Professor um, Adam Finn, I mean, th th these stories are going to be echoed all across the country. And, and if we all think back at a time when we have gone to pay our respects to somebody who's passed away, sometimes you can't think of the words. Words don't really come out at that time, but what we all do is a little gentle hug or put our arm around somebody or, like Pastor said, they just touch their hand. That can help. It can, that can be a million words. The fact that is missing now at a time when people can go out to um, pubs, out, outdoors, to bars, and uh, can do a lot more than they could do a few months ago, a few weeks ago, is it a time now for a, a change in the rules at COVID funerals? Uh, it's very hard not to be affected by those images, uh, um, both, uh, both of those funerals. Uh, uh, very moving to watch. Um, uh, and I think I would contrast that with uh, what I've been experiencing uh, walking around Bristol in the last couple of 
uh, evenings where there are very large crowds of people outside, but crowded together. <clears throat> and I think probably a uh, significant risk of transmission of the virus in that situation. There is obviously an enhanced risk when you're inside compared to outside. But nevertheless, uh, we are in a vulnerable place at the moment with very large numbers of people who neither had the infection nor vaccination. And I'm very concerned about to see uh, a rise in the number of cases uh, as, <clears throat> as we've been seeing in other European countries recently. Um, but I, I can't argue with the need for human comfort in the context of a funeral, of course. Mm. You are, of course, on the Joint Committee on Vaccination and Immunisation. <laughs> Um, you know, there is an argument, for instance, the Queen had been vaccinated. Surely we could allow um, a change in the rules so that if an elderly person, and, and frankly, it's elderly people who are most likely to have lost somebody, um, have been vaccinated, that they could then receive comfort from, you know, a, a, a child, one of their, you know, grown-up children or, or, or some family member. Can you, can you see a, uh, an exception like that being made? Sorry, let me see if I can... Sometimes that happens when you're on television, of course, people <laughs> ring you to tell you that they, that they know that you are. Um, do you think that, that an exception <clears throat> might be made where someone might have been vaccinated? Um, I think the, the tricky thing about uh, discriminating between people who've been vaccinated and people who haven't been vaccinated is that it gives the impression that somehow vaccination provides complete protection, when, of course, these vaccines, they're very good, but they're not perfect. Um, and so really we need to move towards a place where the rules change for everyone at once at the right time when it's sufficiently safe to do that. The people who've received vaccination so far are amongst the most vulnerable, uh, the, the oldest people in society, people with underlying um, uh, illnesses and so on. Uh, and although they're, they're much safer now having been vaccinated than they were before, uh, we can't be sure that they're completely OK. And there is a real, still a real risk that they may be exposed because the virus is still around. So it's, it's a bit difficult to start discriminating between people who have or haven't had the vaccine. Yeah, particularly and of since course, that's interesting because, of course, vaccine passports are being discussed when it comes to entry to hospitality or to other services, perhaps to go on holiday. But I would have thought that a lot of people seeing Craig's situation, hearing um, Lorraine's, um, Pastor Jones's situation, that, that might argue that actually if there's ever a need for making an exception, it's for those people who need comfort at their, at their time of greatest anguish. Yes, of course, uh, absolutely. And, and we all have to make judgments, don't we, all the time. We have rules that we need to adhere to in order to keep the pandemic under control, but we also need to make judgments from time to time uh, as to what is the right thing to do. Uh, I think it's particularly difficult for staff, uh, whether it's in a hospital or in a, a, um, a church or uh, where a, f a funeral might be going on, to to try and make those judgments on behalf of other people. They've they've been given instructions of what they need to do, and so they have to follow them. So this is a very difficult dilemma. I quite agree. Lo uh, Pastor Lorraine Jones, funerals are really important social occasions because they're where we come together to to give each other comfort and to you know. It, it, celebrate the life of, of somebody who has lost as well as mourn them. But what impact do you think overall this, this rule has had on, on that important rite of passage for us? There's been an increase of uh, trauma and um, stress and depression because people are not allowed to, to grieve and, and have that support at that breaking point. So the ripple effects has, has really heightened the, the trauma and the, the grief that the individual is going through. You know, I, I, I totally, you know, understand and agree with, with the rules because of, you know, safety, but I really, really think that the, the church and the, the service of the church really needs to be taken into account as much as the pubs and the, the sports arena, because there are hundreds and thousands that are dedicated to that type of congregation and having that taken away, especially through funerals. The reality is that we've lost so many through this virus and we've got 
hundreds and thousands that have been affected in some way or the other. So it is still a type of sickness and that support needs to be given, especially within the church, within funerals. And I would say as part as a congregation as well. And Craig, I mean, you know, when you see those images of people at the weekend, you know, absolutely packed outside venues, but you weren't allowed to sit next to your mum at her hour of greatest need. That must really, really hurt. Yeah, it's, it's so frustrating to see. And as I say, when you see, I, we adhere to the rules, but then the rules are so confusing, as I keep saying, when, it's, when it comes to funerals and it comes to going out to a pub, um, you know, being outside a restaurant. And when I was watching the funeral on Saturday, I can turn the telly over and I'm watching the snooker where you're now allowed 33% of the capacity allowed in that venue, which is a few hundred people. Um, the rules are they've got to have a COVID test before they go in to sit indoors together and maybe have it a couple of days after. And then I can go and sit in a marquee with hundreds of people outside a pub. I can go down to Soho. Um, but the funerals have not been spoke about and not been changed. Um, why can't we put things in place? Why can't we put a COVID test in place? Why can't we do things to make these families be together when we need to be together, when friends and family need to be together? There's so many people not being able to go and say goodbye and be with their loved ones, friends, family, whoever it may be, because of the rules that are set in place. And you can't get that time back. That's what we can't get back. You know, we can miss a football match. Fine. We can watch it again next year. We can miss a boxing match. We can miss events. That's fine. They can do it again. We can't do this again. You know, we've missed that opportunity and people are missing that opportunity to say goodbye. And it needs to change. Not tomorrow. It needs to change now. Craig, thank you for joining us. And, um, you know, we're obviously, we were heartbroken by those pictures and for your loss. And Pastor Lorraine Jones, for you as well, I had no idea. And I'm so sorry for, for you and your family for what you've lost. Thank you for joining us. And Professor Adam Finn, thank you um, as well. It's been, you know, it is just one of the brutal, brutal realities of the restrictions.